Well, we are starting a new series. Before somebody told me, how about a new series? I said, I will do it. <laughs> well, we are going to speak on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's the first time I'm doing this teaching. So I'm going to be learning and teaching. And it's true for every message, by the way. Uh, that's how it should be. You know, it has to be a fresh word from the Lord. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this wonderful morning, Lord. Help us to meditate on your word and help us to understand your word and help us to apply your word. And Lord, even as we meditate on the spiritual gifts, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord, help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and help us to receive all the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can impact and influence others around us, Lord. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just, I uh, will start with a very quick story. Uh, there was this uh, missionary, or a to-be missionary. He, this person wanted to be a missionary and uh, he went to an, for an interview. And the person from the missions board asked him to come at 5 a.m. in the morning. You know, think about your interviewer calling you to come at 5 a.m., what would you do? You will ask him, why do I need to be there at 5 a.m.? Anyway, so he showed up at 5 o'clock uh, at his home and then uh, says, sit down, and he, he never asks why 5 a.m. He says, spell baker for me. He says, B-A-K-E-R. You know, and then he says, what is two plus two? He says, four. Then he says, I think you passed. I'm going to recommend you for being a missionary with the missions board. And that's it. <laughs> okay. And he was wondering what really happened. So the examiner reported saying, this particular person is a fine missionary who was first tested in self-denial, you know, making him arrive at 5 o'clock in the morning. And it was apparently snow country. When think about getting to the office at 5 o'clock, I'm not sure, Raj, whether you get to the office at 5 o'clock. If it is snowing, it's even worse. So he's saying, I tested him in self-denial first by making him arrive at 5 o'clock. He arrived on time. Then I examined him in patience, you know, he didn't really ask why 5 a.m. I examined him in humility because I asked him a question that a seventh grader can respond. You know, think about you go to an interview for a software tech job and they ask you to spell Baker, <laughs> you know, it, it can be insulting, right? But then this particular gentleman had the fruit of the Holy Spirit to just answer what he was asked and he left and he was chosen to be the missionary. But anyway, the, the reason I shared this story is though we are going to meditate on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we should never forget that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is very, very important because God, it is by the grace of God we receive the gifts. It is nothing to boast and the reason the Lord gives us the gifts is to empower others, to influence others, you know, but the fruit actually takes years to develop. And I mean, think about uh, a fruit tree versus a Christmas tree, you know, you can hang a gift very quickly and you can pick up that gift on Christmas day, you open what, and you are excited about it, but to develop that fruit it takes time. You know, and I think the, and I just wanted to set the context that though we are going to talk about the fruit, uh, the gifts, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is very important. Okay. So today it's more an introduction to this and then we will dig deeper as we uh, move forward. And um, so if you really think about it, God created the heavens and the earth. He set man on this earth. He created Adam. He, he brought Eve to Adam. And we know all that story. Man fell. 
But if you really think about it, even before the gifts of the Holy Spirit were given, there were two other gifts given to mankind. You know, we all like gifts. How many like to receive gifts? How many like to give gifts? I like to receive, I should say. I mean, there are some others who really like to give gifts and remember birthdays and I need to catch up on that. I need help. But the good news is, you know, God actually thought about humanity. He had a plan B already. And there was a gift that was already decided upon if man falls and he knew he's an omniscient God. He knows the end from the beginning. So the plan B was already created for God to send Jesus to this earth for the salvation of mankind. You know, that is the first gift. So the thing is, some of you, those who are watching, maybe you're watching later, you probably do not know the God of the Bible. You know, it's such an amazing offer by the creator God for us to have a personal relationship. He is a God who gives gifts. He is a God who instructs us in the way we should go. He is a God who, who accompanies us. He sends the Holy Spirit as a paraclete to walk with us. He makes our life joyful and he directs our path. So it is such a great gift that has been given to us and I don't know why people would say no. And we all need to be mouthpieces of this gift that has been given by the God of the Bible. You know, that is the first gift, if you will, and it is given to the sinner, if you will. The first gift of God is the gift of salvation, is God sending his only begotten son to this earth to uh, lay his life down, a spotless lamb, lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world for the salvation of mankind. And that is the first gift that was given. If you read 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You know, some people say, well, this gospel is so simple. No, it is simple. And that's why many actually go east and go to Tibet and go to these mountains to find something that is more complex. You know, maybe Buddhism, but the message of the gospel almost sounds like silliness, almost sounds like stupidity, almost sounds like foolishness. But that is the truth. And it's so so easy to receive this gift and then you will experience the blessings of receiving that gift. You know, the creator God has planned this gift from the foundations of the world and you and I need to be the mouthpiece for our communities. I mean, look at the Bay Area even. You know, the, the focus is not about God. If you talk about God in your workplace, maybe you're persecuted. You know, the, the conference rooms, do not acknowledge God. And maybe if you acknowledge God, that's not, a, that's not appreciated, especially in the Bay Area. How many can relate? I mean, we have all been in meetings where there have been bad words spoken, you know. But sometimes we have to, you know, after the meeting, go to them and say, I didn't really appreciate you using the bad word. And it's okay. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, you need to have wisdom to communicate that. John 14 and 16 says, this is the second gift that God gives us. It's the promise of the Father. You know, John 14 and 16, and I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another helper. Say with me, another helper. See, it's such a beautiful plan of salvation. And then, and Jesus had to come down as 100% human, 100% God, with all the temptations that we would face, with the limitations of geography, limitations of time and space, and he lived here for 33 years, accomplished the mission for the first gift. And then, 
is praying to the Father that he'll send us another helper that he may abide with you forever. What a beautiful plan. You know, the Holy Spirit, there is no limitation for the Holy Spirit. He, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We receive the seal of the Holy Spirit when we are saved. And then we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, as we ask the Lord, once we repent and pray and we are saved, that's when we can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the second gift is for the believer. Say with me, the second gift is for the believer. The second gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that is the amazing plan of God. And it doesn't stop there. He continues to give us gifts. What a Amazing God we serve. Can we give a hand to the Lord? You know. He is a God who gives us gifts. And all we need to do is receive that gift and run with it. He makes our life so easy actually. Even as Christy said, he instructs us in the way we should go. He guides us with his eye. And the Lord was reminding me, Philippians 1 and 6, that he will enable us to finish what he has started. You know, never be concerned. Will we be able to finish what we started? Because he is going to be with you. He is going to guide you. He is going to speak to you. He is not a, a God who is sitting in heaven. He is within you. The seal of the Holy Spirit is given to us when we are saved. And then when we receive that anointing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is an outpouring, there is an overflow. And the, the Lord gives us gifts of the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us. He leads us. I, I know one man of God, he used to hear the voice of God audibly. And the Lord used to tell him, go to Ethiopia, you know, go to Indonesia. And he used to hear even what suit to wear. Praise God. You know, and different gifts are there. It's not to be prideful about. It's, it's a grace of God that he gives us these gifts. And the reason he gives us these gifts is based on our calling and purpose. You know, if your calling is to go lay hands on people to heal them, you know, God will give you that gifts of healings as the word of God says. John 16 and 7. Let's look at John 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not, if, or if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. What a great plan. You know, the helper, another helper. Another helper. You know, he couldn't be with everyone, but he sent the Holy Spirit so that the entire human race, once they receive this God of the Bible, receive Jesus Christ as their personal savior, they will have another helper as a seal. And when they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they even receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they are now really equipped to reach others around them, you know. There will be the power of God that will descend upon them and they will now be ready to reach and witness to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria and to the ends of the world. You know, that's what God has given us as gifts, if you will. You know, in John 16 and 7, the word helper is paraclete. Say with me, paraclete. Paraclete. Paraclete means one called alongside to help. Jesus said, I'll send you another helper. One called alongside to help. What a great privilege to have the Holy Spirit as our paraclete as we navigate this journey of life. You know, what a great uh, comfort in knowing that we have a paraclete, another helper that Jesus promised us that he will be walking alongside to help. So you are never alone. 
you know i know even during this covid and we are seeing we are reading reports about the young people being depressed and there is a suicidal uh, tendencies and issues i am here to encourage all of us and families that have young people that we need to encourage them and tell them there is a gift of god for each one of you there is another helper that has been given to you and young people those who are watching who do not know the lord i challenge you to just hold on and listen to this word it will be a great blessing for you and you will have an opportunity to receive this lord jesus christ in your heart towards the end of this message god is a god who showers us with gifts and the plan of these two major gifts were done even before the foundations of the world if you will and then he keeps his promise the promise of the father acts 2 if you look at acts 2 1 through 4 when the day of pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind this is the promise of the father this is the second gift that is to the believer you know the unbelievers cannot receive this gift the disciples were gathered in one place in one accord they were waiting for the promise of the father they were in one place in one accord expecting for god to move and that's where i think the expectation for revival needs to be stirred up in our heart you know we we obeyed the lord by gathering the people but what next we have to expect a mighty outpouring of the holy spirit and the disciples were expecting a mighty outpouring of the holy spirit and that's where the church was launched at pentecost but they were supposed to just to be together and praying and waiting for the promise of the father and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting you know the holy spirit was poured out for the first time on the day of pentecost and then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance you know how many of you have that experience of speaking in tongues and the baptism of the holy spirit uh, you know or let me ask the question another way how many of you are waiting for this baptism of the holy spirit is everyone filled with the baptism of the holy spirit praise god okay it's okay i think all of us there were times you know i was if you ask pastor jemima you know i was uh, saying we do not need the baptism of the holy spirit you know that's true because the word of god is different and it's it's okay and we we all this is a journey raj all of us are on a journey you know and the lord teaches us at the right times you know for me pastor jemima taught me about the baptism of the holy spirit and she laid hands on me and i received the baptism of the holy spirit and my ministry has never been the same it is important to receive the baptism of the holy spirit we'll pray towards the end in a corporate prayer and the lord will fill anyone who is not filled with the baptism of the holy spirit you know so holy spirit is a person and he is a gift and jesus said i am going to send you another helper you know so those are the two big picture gifts if you will and acts 1 and 8 you know we all know that but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you you know it's the power of god that we receive that's why it is a power that we need and need to be equipped with to do the work of god more powerfully you know to be a witness boldly we need the anointing of the holy spirit to be able to go to a stranger and share the gospel we need the anointing of the holy spirit you know sometimes they might just when you give tracts you know we used to go to san francisco in the year 2012 every month for the prayer ride we used to go to san francisco and we had these uh, tracts that we used to distribute and we used to go to the um, the neighborhood um, which has a lot of homeless people and 
And it was really the first few months, uh, Sam, it was scary actually. Because as we walked the streets, you know, they knew and, and, and it's so dirty. Now it's even worse, unfortunately. We need to pray for the city. But we used to give these tracks, you know, and one person just rolled this and threw it on my face. And this happened in the first few months. It, it was very tense to even walk in those neighborhoods. But as we prayed, after three months, we saw the environment really calm down. You know, and then we saw people accept the Lord on the streets of San Francisco. You know, we used to go to the BART station, captive audience, right? <laughs> I like the concept of captive audience, uh, Brother Suman. You know, you just go there, everybody's traveling, there are hundreds of people, you just keep giving tracks. Some will not take it, some will stay back and talk to you, you know, but only when you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can do it with great courage and great boldness. And you don't care if they are throwing the paper at you. I, I was thinking about, uh, you know, persecution that is going on around the world. This is nothing. It's just a paper. They didn't throw stones at me, you know. So it's okay. And it is important for us to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay, so number two I want to share about, there are three categories of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to dive a little deeper from next week. Today I just want to give a very broad uh, picture of what we are going to talk about. And, and then next week uh, we'll see how we are going to do it. I am still, um, still thinking how to do this one at a time or in groups, we'll see. Not decided yet. Okay, and maybe you can give me some feedback. If you want to go deeper in each one, then we can do that. That will be uh, another nine weeks. And if you include the spiritual gifts, uh, because there is not only the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there are spiritual gifts like helps and administrations and others. Uh, so we'll see how the Lord will lead us. The Lord will lead us. So 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. No, we need to understand it well. We need to study it. I know last year, I think we did the series on uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I'm glad we are. I think it really is a good segue from our revival conference. You know, the Lord said, this is what you need to be teaching. So I thank God for that. <clears throat> now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. We must understand that. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Of course, Paul was addressing issues in the Corinthian church at that time. You know, maybe they, they still were going back to their idolatry, uh, which was probably close to them, the dumb idols he talks about. You know, and we we have so many other idols, uh, you know, in the nation. And the Lord has shut down most of those idols. And of course, now some of the sports are starting up. By the way, I also enjoy sports, nothing against sports. But when things are prioritized higher than God, that's when it becomes an idol. So we need to be careful. Of course, it's good to enjoy sports. It's good to see that NBA final that is uh, going on. I don't know if there are NBA fans here. You know, it's good to, it's good. I mean, it, uh, it motivates us and it inspires us. Maybe we need to play too, you know, not just watch. You know, we need to exercise and, and, and play as well. But the key, the key here is the Holy Spirit will lead us and we need to keep Jesus at the center because he is the baptizer. He is the one who said, I'm going to pray the Father that he will, uh, he will, send you another helper. You know, we need to keep Jesus at the center of it all, if you will. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4. Let's read verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Say with me, diversities. Diversities. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives us diversities of gifts. There are various kinds of gifts. And God 
chooses by his grace to distribute those gifts that what that's what the word of god says the word gift here is the word charisma actually the word gift in 1 corinthians 12 and 4 is charisma and the plural i think is charismata but that doesn't matter what does it mean that's the key it means a gift of grace say with me a gift of grace see gift is always given freely right there is nothing to be proud about you know if somebody gives you a gift you know you are thankful and it's a gift of grace that word really means a gift of grace and then it says a favor which one receives without any merit of his own see the gift is given freely without any specific merit you don't need any merit to receive that gift god chooses to give it to us based on our calling based on our purpose based on what we need to accomplish his plan on this earth and that's why it is a favor which one receives without any merit of his own and then it says the gift of divine grace it's a divine grace when he gives us spiritual gifts it's a divine grace it's a favor of god a gift of grace and there is no merit needed in us god is not looking for a a bunch of check boxes to give us those gifts and that's why you know once we receive that gift you know god doesn't take the gifts back that's why we need to be so careful because we need to handle the gift with responsibility and and that's why we see sometimes issues about people handling the gifts of the holy spirit and then it brings a bad name to the church so it is a big responsibility when the lord gives us a gift to handle it with care to be responsible and not have the pride because it is the favor of god it's the grace of god it's divine grace of god that he has given us that gift you know it has to be handled with a lot of care verse 5 in first corinthians 12 says there are differences of ministries but the same lord you know how the lord puts teams together with complementary gifts how the lord puts families together husbands and wives with complementary gifts if i ask you one by one you all will say the giftings if i ask the husbands you will say the giftings my spouse has are complementary how many can relate or maybe they are the same but but ours is totally complementary you know and the lord plans it that way because then he teaches us patience you know he teaches us to be forgiving you know he 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 has a sense of humor and in the beginning of the marriage it is not all that easy and i understand that we all go through that because the lord challenges us to uh, to put down our pride you know when when you uh, when you have to say the first sorry okay i know some of the spouses might not be happy when you have to say the first the even though you are not at fault you know it takes humility it takes humility because we do that because god has put us in a covenant relationship uh you know and we need to be humble i don't know how i ended up there let's continue to focus on the gifts of the holy spirit if you will there are differences of ministries but the same lord you know there is different things that need to happen to accomplish god's plan and and god gives assignments based on our our giftings then it says there are diversities of activities but it is the same god who works all in all you know there is so much needs to be done for the work of god and he also you know god tests us he will give us a very simple assignment it's like spelling baker if you will you know if he didn't spell baker that day he would not be a missionary so the lord will give us very simple assignments first and check are you faithful in that you know my first assignment was in fact i came up with the idea i was on a board of a church this was back in middle 90s raj 
And I said, we should have a PO box. <laughs> and our pastor said, okay, then why don't you do it? <laughs> I like that idea, by the way. You know, so I used to, my assignment every week, Raj, was to go, because Raj does the PO box here. Every week, I used to go and check the PO box mail. I came up with the idea, so I got to do it. You know, it's interesting. So the Lord actually gives us simple assignments, but we need to continue to do every assignment faithfully. Verse 7 in 1 Corinthians 12, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I think that's the key word we need to understand and I need to understand. The gifts, the manifestation of the Spirit is given not for our own self. God gives us these gifts to bless others, to minister to others, to encourage others. You know, that's why he gives us the gifts. He has given us the gifts of healings. You know, you, you are then inspired to pray for others because God will use you to heal others. If he has given us a gift of prophecy, then you use that prophecy to, to encourage others, to edify other people around, uh, around you. That's how these gifts work. And we can test the prophecies. You know, is it aligned with the word? Is it edifying others? You know, we need to test prophecies. And don't receive the prophecies that are not aligned to the word. Just because somebody is prophesying doesn't mean that God is speaking through them. Unfortunately, I have to make that statement, but, but we need to test the prophecies. And in verse 8 through 11, it actually lists the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. Or to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit. You know, faith appears both in the fruit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And God gives us, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit gives us a, a portion of mustard seed of His faith so that we can move mountains. You know, even a small portion of God's faith in our life, a mustard seed faith, and He gives us a measure of faith. We all know that. We all start with the measure of faith. That mustard seed faith can move mountains, Moni. You know, if there is a mountain facing in your work, God has given you the measure of faith to speak to that mountain to be removed. You know, and, and of course, there is a difference between the fruit and the gift, and we'll maybe address that when we, when we go into uh, the gift of faith. You know, not everybody has the gift of faith. But then, People who have the gift of faith need to do what the Lord is asking them to do. Take that step out of the boat so that they can walk on water, but there is a specific purpose. There is nothing to be prideful of that I have a gift of faith. No, it is for an assignment and, and the discipline for the work of God that uh, Pastor Jemima, you were sharing, you know, even uh, prayer times and, and things like that. It's important. And then to another, gifts of healings. It's plural, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. And then verse 11 says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will. Some have all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure if you study the life of Paul, he had all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we can receive, we can ask the Lord to, uh, to give us all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and he can give it. He can give it. And depending on our assignment, you know, we can ask. You know, we can ask. And we should ask. You know, A.W. Tozer says... Eternal things cannot be done by mortal man. So that's a very interesting statement. Eternal things cannot be done by mortal man. That's why we need these gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, by just having a strategy to bring revival, we cannot do it. 
unless the presence of the Lord comes into the community, unless there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, there is no revival. You can have all these big conference room gatherings with different uh, groups and say, let's, let's have a transformation of the city. And unfortunately, there are those meetings happening. I don't want to point fingers, but, but that's not how it works to create an impact in the kingdom of God. Eternal things cannot be done by mortal man. And that's, that's where, you know, it puts us, it humbles us, actually. We cannot be, we cannot even get somebody saved. We can share the gospel, yes, but the Holy Spirit has to convict their hearts. That's when they will receive the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit begins to manifest the gifts in believers Holy Spirit brought Jesus to the earth. Now Jesus brings the Holy Spirit to man. You know, it's a very interesting triune God that we all serve. You know? The Holy Spirit brought Jesus to earth, but now Jesus brings the Holy Spirit to man. So there are three categories of gifts. And this is more a teaching. It's not preaching. This is more to understand the word of God, understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's the season. I think for the next several weeks, we will be learning about each of the gifts. And even let's ask God for him to give us those gifts, even during these services. We, at the end of the service, as we teach, we pray, Lord, give us that gift so that we can serve you in a more powerful way. You know, there are three categories of these gifts. And uh, revelation gifts is one category which has three gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. And I'm not going to do any summary on these uh, today, but as we go forward, we are going to learn about this. So revelation gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of the spirits. Then power gifts, say with me, power gifts, power gifts. Faith is a power gift, a gift of faith, working of miracles and gifts of healings, it's plural, gifts of healings. You know, and many have that gift. We thank God for that. And, and those who have that gift, use that gift. You know, don't hide it, use that gift. Vocal gifts, prophecy, different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So that's how a man of God actually categorized these gifts. And I think I like that, to just understand it a little bit better, you know. So what is our part? You know, we understand this big picture. Thirdly, I want to share, we need to desire these gifts. That's what the word of God says, 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. But earnestly desire the best gifts. Earnestly desire the best gifts. You know, our, our part is not to say, well, according to my purpose, I just need this gift. No. Let the Lord is going to decide that. But our job is to earnestly desire the best gifts. Earnestly desire the best gifts. And earnestly, the word earnestly is striving after. Striving after. It's not just we desire. Desire might be a little, it's not a very strong word. Maybe. At least that's what I feel. But striving after is much stronger. Right? Earnestly desire the best gifts. Strive after the best gifts. Strive after the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Even 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Desire spiritual gifts. The question is, are we desiring spiritual gifts? Are we earnestly desiring these gifts of the Holy Spirit? Are we striving after the gifts of the Holy Spirit? And then in verse 12 in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts. We need to be zealous for spiritual gifts. One burning with zeal, that's the term used there. One burning with zeal. I'm zealous. I'm earnestly desiring the best gifts that the Lord has for me. You know, are we in that uh, posture? We need to have that posture even before we can receive those gifts because the Lord 
will give us those gifts based on our purpose. But I believe if we keep praying, God can give us all the gifts and then he can use you. The gifts are given for you to be used to do the work of God. It's not given just for you to be saying, well, I have these gifts. No, what is the point? How are you going to use those gifts that are given? And there are, in Ephesians 4, it talks about a few other gifts, if you will, and also Romans 12. We can quickly read those and wrap it up. Those are spiritual gifts. We read in 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, let's read it. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, that's also an assignment for each one. What is your assignment? And sometimes it takes time to find your assignment. It's okay. Until you find your assignment, you keep doing everything that the opportunities that are opened to you. Uh, if you will. In Romans 12, 4 through 8, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. That's how the whole body of Christ functions. You know, each one has a function. There is no dummies in the body of Christ. Each one has a role. A new believer who has just accepted the Lord, you know, he has a purpose. And of course, he needs to pursue God to find that purpose. And as we walk with the Lord, you will receive those gifts that you need. And you, there will be clarity on your purpose. It's a journey. And the exciting part of this journey is there is never a dull moment. If you're walking with the Lord, the Lord will continue to guide you and lead you and give you that rhema word every day and direct your path. And there are so many decisions we need to take. God will speak to you as to what decisions to make, which path to take, which job assignment to take. And that God is involved in our lives. He's not a remote God. He's a personal God. The Holy Spirit is in us and on us to speak to us, to lead us and to guide us. And then it goes on to say in verse 6, Romans 12, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. These are differing gifts. You know, if you take this room, we all have differing gifts and that is on purpose. And, but the Lord has brought us together so that we can accomplish the corporate mission and vision for what he has called us together for. And that's a powerful way how the Lord really puts differing gifts in, in our midst. It's very powerful. And then it goes on to say, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So there is a lot of spiritual gifts if you really think about it, and it's listed in Ephesians 4, in Romans 12, uh, you know, even in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Uh, let's read that. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Then it goes on to say, are all apostles, are all prophets. That means not all of them have the same gift. Not all of us have the same assignment. And God doesn't look at this assignment is big versus this assignment is small. He's looking at our faithfulness to our assignment. You know, maybe the person who, um, who is setting up the chairs, God might be the most pleased with him because he did that most faithfully. God doesn't look at the body of Christ saying, uh, he's going to call all of us servants, you know. He is looking at our faithfulness. And that's what we all need to strive towards. You know, the giftings are given by God so that we can execute the mission. And then all glory belongs to the Lord. And that's how we have to understand these gifts. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Jesus. I'll read one more verse and a couple more thoughts. You know, spiritual gifts are important 
to us as individuals. Spiritual gifts are important to the church. Spiritual gifts are important to the world. Because even to impact our nation, we need the spiritual gifts to be able to impact the world. And 1 Peter 4.10, last verse, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As each one has received the gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this wonderful morning, Lord. Thank you for the word of God today, even as we meditated, Lord. And I'm learning, and all of us are learning, Lord, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and also the spiritual gifts. There are many spiritual gifts, uh, Lord, and each one has an assignment. And each one, Lord, you give the gifts based on our assignment. We thank you and praise you. Lord, bless each one today, even those who are watching. Lord, I pray that each one will understand the spiritual gifts, will understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit and understand that this is not something to be proud of, but this is for our assignment. In this, on this earth, Lord, we thank you and praise you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. For those who are watching this, maybe later or even now, and do not know the God of the Bible, I just want to encourage you. A gift was planned for you even before the foundation of the world. A gift was planned for you, and that is, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was sent to this earth to die for you and me, to shed his blood on the cross so that our guilt will be removed. And that is the first gift that was given. This is a God who gives gifts. And you don't want to reject this gift because that will secure your eternity. And you can be with him as you receive the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in your heart. My question is, do you want to receive this gift that has been given? The gift is laying there in front of you, but you need to pick it up and open it. That's when it will be yours. You need to receive that gift. So that is the challenge to you today. Do you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart? I'm going to pray a short prayer. And if the Lord is speaking to you, then pray together with me. Those who are watching over the internet, there is a gift planned for you. Heavenly Father, I did not know about this gift, but today I know that you have given me the gift of salvation the eternal life through Jesus Christ. And I receive the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart today. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. And I want this gift in my life. If you have prayed that prayer, you are a new creation and join be part of a Bible-believing church. We need a community. We all need a community so we can grow together. If you are in the Bay Area, you're welcome to join us at the Blessing Church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master, for this wonderful morning. Lord, help us to continue to learn and grow. Help us to grow in you. Help us to receive all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And help us to understand our assignments, uh, Lord, on this earth. And help us to execute that assignment. We thank you and praise you. Thank you, Master.